The global economy is giving us a different picture than the stock market. As we achieve record highs, most people become complacent. We watch stocks achieve impossible heights and forget that risk brings about fragility. Fragility leads to failure. As we have learned from the previous cycles, there has never been a time in which we have been warned about a stock market crash or a recession. The government won't warn you, the TV won't warn you, other investors won't warn you. It will sucker punch you and it will hurt. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at the real economic indicators. No, I'm not talking about the Dow Jones. I'm not talking about Amazon stock. I am looking at actual real fundamental analysis. When you can observe the patterns, you can then decide what is best for your money. I'm going to show you today what is really going on. So let's get into it right away. This comes directly from marketeconomics.com. I have shown you this many times before. This is the most recent information. IHS market flash US PMI. Output growth continues to lose momentum in June. Look at these four here. The composite output index is at a 40 month low. The services business activity is at a 40 month low. The manufacturing PMI is at a 117 month low and the manufacturing output is at 30 37 month low right now. All of these put together start to paint an interesting picture, but we've only just begun. I have so many to show you today, it's really going to make your head spin. IHS market composite PMI and US GDP. This looks like it could be a leading indicator of a potential downward trend for GDP, but because of the way that GDP is calculated, because of the way that it can be manipulated in any country, not just the US, this just shows us that we may not see that necessarily. However, you can see in this particular chart, the market composite PMI has declined quite a bit, and that corresponds to the data I showed you just previously. Shanghai Air Freight, you can see the international inbound year over year delta. This has been going down for basically since 2017 up until the present. This is no surprise with everything that has happened with the trade issues. China's economy is slowing just as others, in this case, Europe. European Air Freight versus Eurozone PMI. The PMI here is the dotted line and you could see the Air Freight Index being the solid green line and both of the these have not performed well from 2018 into 2019. Europe is slowing down, the deflation is taking over, and there is absolutely no sign that this can recover anytime soon. Here's another chart just showing you the manufacturing PMI and the services PMI for the United States. This has come down quite a bit since it peaked out in the middle of 2018. Truck drivers are warning of a bloodbath in their industry as factory activity sinks. When you are looking at these different indicators, you're trying to see, is this a good time to invest? Should I be putting my money here? Where should I be keeping my money? You cannot simply look at what they are telling you in the mainstream media. You are always going to receive information that is very cloudy, that is murky, and that is always filled with marketing and sales. Do not be pulled into that. Get the information, learn how to do it yourself, and you are going to know how to best protect yourself. Freight rates have dipped year over year for six months straight. Trucking companies have slashed expectations for the year. Some smaller outposts have gone bankrupt. Let's not talk about that. People get freaked out. Don't want to mention it. Don't want to bring up the fear, right? Unless you're here for the truth. This corresponds to the CAS Freight Index. This is something I have been bringing up now for a little while, trying to show you the slowdown that has been apparent, and you can't hide it. You can't blame it on one thing, of course. We can say, well, it's Brexit uncertainty. Okay, well, it's the trade issues between the US and China. Yes, all of this plays a role, but nobody ever wants to admit that there is a slowdown, that fundamentally you can have an economy actually subsist on the this fictional Federal Reserve garbage. 
Continued decline in the cast freight shipments index continues to concern us. Now, while I don't want to read it all to you, I suggest you do. This is directly from castinfo.com. Essentially, what they said was that in December of 2018, they started to see this dropping. They just wrote it off. They said, don't worry about it. It's going to happen once in a while, but this will get kickstarted yet again. The next month, they realized, well, you know, it's two months in a row. No big deal. The next month, the next month, the next month. Then they started to finally admit okay we officially have a slowdown that is taking place so at least we're getting that acknowledgement directly from the sources like this themselves here's the chart that corresponds to that you can see the cast freight index shipments year over year percentage change this has been coming down as with all of the others throughout 2018 into 2019 so it is no surprise to see this here and of course there are so many others that are adding up on top of this Chinese auto sales post the worst ever, worst ever monthly decline as the trade issues intensify. This is coming directly from their own resources, so it's not an estimate, it's not something that has been manipulated. Sales tumbled 16% in May from the same month a year prior. That marked the 11th consecutive month of decline and followed falls of 14% in April and 5% in March. At the very bottom, they're talking about how they have this new vehicle emission standards. This is the real cause. It's not because of the economy. It's not because of this or that. You believe what you want. That's the information for you. Looking at the vehicle production by region percentage change, whether this is in China specifically or the rest of the world, gives you the legend on the top right corner. And the prediction is that throughout 2019, there's going to be a very bad year. It's not going to recover in the second half as many had predicted. But of course, this is now just a continuation of what we've been seeing. And nobody can tell the future. But at this point, it doesn't look like there is any recovery recovery at all. This is in the US existing home sales year over year. Now it has actually gotten better than where it was but still on a year over year basis it is declining as you can see in the negative right now. The median existing home price year over year has gone up and why? Well it shouldn't be of any surprise to any of you who have been on here. Mortgage rates are down to near historic lows, currently sitting on an average of 3.84%. This is directly from the FRED website, and I just wanted to show you this because it's quite obvious what happens. You have a lot of people that are refinancing at this time, they're getting a cheaper rate, and also you have people that are enticed in order to buy now, want to get in, the rates are low, let's get in even though we can't necessarily afford it, and so on. Just wanted to show you that because I think it's really important to see how this affects the consumer themselves. Now I know I've shown you all this information, it might be seen as scary, it might be a concern, but you don't have to worry because the Federal Reserve said that the banking system is completely safe and sound. The very bottom of this article, it's said, and I quote, the results confirm that our financial system remains resilient. The nation's largest banks are significantly stronger than before the crisis and would be well positioned to support the economy even after a severe shock. So as far as I'm concerned, everything's totally fine. You can just put your money in there. And just like last time back in 2007, they made some promises equal to this. Back in 2008, said the same thing, even after the recession was on and of course we had so much already happen all the failures and everything they were still telling us that the fed stress tests are showing us a little bit of concern nothing to worry about though we have it under control they will never ever ever tell you that there is a problem i don't know why people believe any of this garbage federal reserve board releases results of the supervisory bank stress tests all of these big banks had to be tested. In this case here, the most severe hypothetical scenario projects a $400 billion total loss for the 18 participating bank holding companies. That's it, $400 billion for these 18 banks. I really do, really do think that we're going to have a much bigger problem when the time comes. The Fed's going to save the day, so nothing to worry about. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like, you're supporting me. It helps to push these higher 
higher up in the search rankings. In fact, if you put a thumbs down, I want to thank you also. I actually am starting to theorize that the thumbs down are better for the engagement on a video. So anytime there are negative comments, anytime there are thumbs down, I really want to thank all of those people for those because based on what I've seen, whenever I get more thumbs down, the video tends to get more views anyway. So thank you to those people. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, then these two books have everything you need. All the details are in the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what's going on in the real economy, then definitely watch this video. I've outlined it here for you. Click on it and I will see you there.